appreciate everyone for coming, the amazing hosts for bringing us into their house and, and letting us enjoy. Yesterday something very amazing happened to me during class. I gave a class and just to share a little bit from the feeling that I had in the end of the class, so I finished the class and it's online, you can, you can, you can see that I said, today we, 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 we all heard like it was a perfect class. Like yesterday Hashem Bach helped me to, to give and to feel that, that I gave a perfect class. And it's not something that happens usually. And I'll tell you why it happened, and I explained it also in the video. That in the day before, I gave a class, and I felt like it was very, very far from being perfect. There was a woman that came to me right after the class and screamed at me. And like, how couldn't you, why, why, why you didn't say this, and why you were not standing on that point, and why, why you were not mentioning that also, and like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're right, and I was, I was so into apologizing and explaining to her, really, because she was lack of that part, and like, it's not a, I'm coming, when, when you're coming to teach, you're coming to, to give out the, the words of Hashem, you're not, it's not like a musician that, you can complain, you don't like my music, so don't come, when you come and you represent Hashem, so you must bring Hashem, so if something is wrong in your class, so something is wrong with you, not with Hashem. So the faults are on your head, not on Hashem. This is why Rabbi Nachman of West is saying it's a dangerous thing to say Torah. Because you, you, if, if you're not nullifying yourself completely to Hashem, so you, you, can, you can bring your mistakes into the words of Torah and then it's not Torah anymore. It's just bringing your own filth, your own mistakes. So, like in the day before, I went with that feeling and I, I told that woman, I'm sorry, I, I was never able to, to give a perfect class in my life. I don't know, you don't have enough time to explain all of... I, 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 I hanged it on, I blamed it on the time. But the truth is that I felt not comfortable with myself. Once I gave a class, and in that class I was talking about Christianity. <coughs> and I was clarifying many, many issues about Christianity. And how that many, many of, of the people that are following Christianity are not aware to, to a wisdom that is more ancient that calls Judaism. Even if they heard about Judaism, they don't really know what we're holding, what we have in our own hands. This is why, like, okay, we're Christians. They're born to be Christians. They're not following Christianity because they checked all of the religions and now they know that they haven't really checked it. They're just following it because that is what they've been taught. So. After I gave that class, so that class went very, very viral, like thousands and thousands of people heard that class, tens of thousands of people online. And most of them, like 93% of the people were very happy with the message, but there were few people that, and we're talking about Christians people, that were not happy with my class. So, students of mine came to me and told me, okay, what do you care? And I was very upset. It, it was very hard for me. So, my students told me, what do you care? Like, okay, those are the people that don't know, don't, don't, don't hear the truth. They can't they deal with the truth. What, what do you care? So, there. So I said, look, if now I have a job to shine the light of Hashem Itbarach in the world, and that light is not going down to the lowest places of the mall, it means that I haven't cleaned myself completely. Because the light of Hashem is enough to shine the world, to illuminate the world completely. 
So if it been blocked by me, even only from 7% of the people that heard me, so I haven't cleaned myself in those percents. So I need to continue with my tshuva. Because if I was even a little bit cleaner, nicer, more gentle, more polite, more something that I was missing, I would reach also those 7%. They would hear me all the way. Because with Moshe Rabbeinu, no one can argue. Even Pharaoh, he hears the truth. Maybe after it, he's going through his hard time. But when Moshe is talking, no one can argue with Moshe. When Abraham Avinu was opening his mouth, it's written in the Midrashim that even Nimrod, that he was the most evil leader ever, like he was a murderer, he was slaughtering babies, he, 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 he couldn't care less about humankind, about life, about good. He, he was cruel, bad. Nothing like we know in, in those generations, even, even, even after the Holocaust. Like he was completely bad. But when Avraham Avinu was talking, he was at least quiet. He couldn't argue with Abraham. So until I'm going to know that I'm like Abraham, that I'm like Moshe, that, that when I say the words of Hashem, it's written on Avraham Avinu, that when he was talking to Nimrod, rebuking Nimrod, so the walls were shaking and the idols of Nimrod were bowing and falling. And then Abraham said to Nimrod, and all of what that you hear, he over here, and everyone are terrified, is only me. And I'm the worst creation of the great creator. And you never heard him when he speaks. So what happened because that Abraham opened his mouth? Even statues, even idols, even, even everything was bowing. Everyone was surrendering. All of the slaves, all of the soldiers, cruel murderers of... of, of Soldiers of, of Nimrod, all of them threw away their weapons and they followed Abraham and they accepted him as a prophet of Hashem. So if I'm talking now and not everyone accepting me as a prophet of Hashem like that Abraham was, it means that I'm not in the level of Abraham. Of Abraham. It doesn't mean that they're silly, that they're stupid, that they don't have the merit to listen to my truth. No, that's arrogance. The truth is that I need to clean myself more. So when that woman came to me after the class and she was rebuking me and screaming, and why are you not saying this? And I saw, I said, okay, you're right, I'm sorry. So yesterday, and I went with that feeling like to give a perfect class, that's impossible. And I was blaming it on time, like I said, like I thought, who can say all of the Torah in, 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 in an hour? Who can, can be so perfect? But then, yesterday, Hashem helped me to give a Torah that I really felt like it was perfect. If that Torah that I said yesterday would be written as one of the Torah in Nikutem Moran, and you can say he's arrogant, I don't care what you're going to think about me, I'm telling you my heart. If that Torah that I said yesterday was written in the Nikutem Moran, none of you would say it's not Torah of Rabbi Nachman Nipreslev. I promise you, you wouldn't feel the difference. It was perfect. It came down perfect. You can watch that video of mine from yesterday. It had an amazing beginning. It was very interesting in the middle. The end was attached to the beginning in a perfect way. I touched all of the points. And soon I'm going to tell you how it all happened. Like, it's wild. It's crazy. That's me. Crazy. And... <laughs> and, and and like it was, it was really perfect, and I felt it. So it was again a rebuke from Hashem, like more like 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 a blessing, to show me there is nothing that is impossible. Really, everything is is possible, even to say perfect Torah, because not all of the Torah is perfect because it's complete. Also, every verse inside of the Torah is perfect. When Moshe came down from Mount Sinai, so he didn't read the Torah from Bereshit until the Nekol Israel. No, he, he just gave only a few verses is that part. So it was perfect. And then when he opened up and revealed another verse and another section, another part, another parasha, every part was perfect in his place, even though that it was not yet perfect connected to all of the rest of the Torah. Every part of the Torah is perfect. Every letter of the Torah is perfect. When you clean yourself, 
you can reveal a perfect part of you even if you are not perfect, even if you're not complete yet. Because when you're saying words of truth, no matter where you are and who you are and in which level you're saying it, you're saying the truth. And it's the truth. And the truth is the truth. So it's perfect. No matter who you are and where you're holding. And that's amazing. I met once the Bial Rebbe from, from Jerusalem, from Givat Shaul, amazing, amazing person. And he's got divine spirit. Like once he came to me, I, I, I came to, to him, we spoke, and, and he just said to me, you remember that it was the dude that you were doing, that you were praying? And yes, I remember. And like, what are you talking about? I, I was there alone. <laughs> and, and then he's saying, in the middle of the night, in the graveyard, Shomre Shabbat in Bnei Brak, and like, I was alone. And he was there. Like, I cannot explain it, but really, that's exactly what had happened. And he told me, those prayers that you prayed on Am Israel in that night, they brought a huge salvation for Am Israel. You saved many, many Jews with your prayers in that night. And like... I know what I was doing over there. I was fighting with Hashem in that night. I was, I was brave. I was strong. I was fighting hard. But how do you know what happened? So this is that person, the Bialy Rebbe, that he can tell you that he knows those amazing things. So he came and, and he, he, he revealed that thing to me. So once, in a different time, when I came and spoke with him, so he looked at me and he told me, when you're, he's with his eyes closed and he's saying, when you're coming to teach, you don't know even what you're going to say. And then you open your mouth, and suddenly Torah from heaven is coming out. And you say words that are amazing, and you haven't even planned those words of Torah to be said. I'm not planning my Torah. I'm just really saying the truth. And Hashem is using me as a tool as a, to... to, to to, to continue that light to others. If I will sit and think Torah with myself, I can never in the world bring down Torah like that I can say in a class. But because of the merit of the children of the creation, because that God he is desiring to say the truth already, that the truth will be heard, and it of, of course depends in the vessels of the students how much they desire the truth. So if they're coming with complete will to hear the truth, the truth will be heard. People will hear it. People will accept it. So I can just be very thankful to Hashem Yidvah that is using me in this way to reveal the, 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 the hidden Torah like that it, it, the Zohar Kodosh is calling it Atika Setima'a, the ancient and, and sealed and covered wisdom of, of the Creator. That's the initials of my name. Dror Moshe Kasuto is Kedem. The initials complete the word Kedem. Kedem is Chadesh Yamenu Kedem. Renew our days today like that it was before of the creation. And what it means like about me, because I'm a person that I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm not belong to this world. Not because I'm holy or something divine. No, not at all. Just I, I really hate this world. Like, I can't stand it. It's, it's so bad for me to be here. Like, I want to go home already. Like, and, and it's not Miami that I can't stand. I, it's, I like it here. It's nice. Like, nice people, nice view, nice sunsets. Nice. Today we saw the sea. It's fantastic. Like, the colors, it's amazing. It's nice. The world itself, even in Jerusalem, like, it's not life. That's not real life. So I feel it always, always, like, from my childhood. I'm not belonging to this place. I feel like I'm from somewhere else. And, and I'm, I'm, my job here is always to desire, always to want to, to, to uncover the truth, to come back to those ancient days of before creation. Because when the Creator, He created the world, so His will was to reveal His mercy. To reveal the mercy, it's, 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 it's impossible 
in the illuminating world because the meaning of the word mercy is to give something good to someone that is not worthy someone that is not supposed to receive it like the creator he is not owing he doesn't he's not he, he doesn't owe us anything and still he gives his bounty to us so if he, so it means that we have some kind of lacking mercy is that you help someone that needs you that he's got a lacking he's poor he's weak he's tired he's, he's far so you have mercy on him even that you're not supposed to but you want to that's the mercy of Hashem so he reveals his mercy on us so the world is dark and the reason that the world is dark is only for that fact that the Creator will be able to reveal His mercy, to give His light. So the word Olam, the word Olam, means blocking, disappearing, hiding the light of Hashem. The word Olam means He'elem, hiding. The world, the physicality of this world is blocking the spirituality of the world to come, of the earliest days, the ancient days of before creation. So the creation is blocking the light of Hashem in Barach from us. And there are souls that cannot stand the constrictions of this world. They f and not because they're evil, not because they're bad, just because that they are so connected to spirituality, they desire to go back to, back to the earliest days, back to Hashem Yitbarach, so much that they cannot stand, no kindergarten, no school, no, 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 nothing, no system, no house can, can, can put them in, into, into no cubes, no, like, they're free, they're, they're sparrows, that, that's my name, Dro, that, that's how I was, always, I was a sparrow, I, I always wanted to be free, I was, in school, I was allowed to to walk in the corridors. Like, the, no, no, it was no. It, it's okay. He allowed to paint. He allowed to illustrate. He allowed to go out. He doesn't need to ask for permission to drink. To, because they couldn't handle me. Like I was not <laughs> reality. That's me. No one can put me in a cage. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a free person. And this is why also to 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 do tshuva. To come into a Haredi world, into the religious world, it was a nightmare for me. And for 12 years that I lived in Beit Israel, I, I, it like that I put myself in prison. In the first few months of me entering to Yeshiva, I was learning in the Yeshiva of Rav Shalom Arush. So I came to him and I spoke with him about issues in my life. So he told me, listen, also Yosef HaTzadik, the righteous one, he had to be 12 years in prison. It was one of our first conversations. Even Yosef HaTzadik, he had to go through his 12 years in prison. You, you, I hope you can believe it, but the truth is that when I left the yeshiva and went to open a center of my own in a mixed neighborhood in, in, in Rechavia neighborhood in Jerusalem, that's where I opened my center, it was in the parashot that we're talking about Yosef at Tzadik that he became, and, and the last month was all of the story of him being sold by his brothers and all of the sorrow and suffering that, that he went through. All of those lectures that I was talking in those days are online. You can hear all of those amazing lectures on, on YouTube, on our website. And in the end, the parasha that I, that I left the neighborhood Beit Israel and I went to find what? Myself, where in Rechavia, what is Rechavia? Mina Mitzar Karatiya, from the narrow places I called Hashem, Anani Ba Rechavia. He came to me from Rechavia. Hashem Ibrahim answered to me from Rechavia, from that neighborhood. That's the meaning of the, of the name Rechavia. That neighborhood is expanding from the, from, from, the, from the open space. From there Hashem answered to me. So, the parasha that I left, Bet Israel, and I, went, I moved to, to Rechavia, was the parasha that Yosef, he was the king, and he's revealing himself to his brother. So like, what that Rav Shalom told me was like in a spark of divine spirit, or HaKodesh, prophecy, whatever you want, however you want to call it. He saw that I'm going to hold his hand, and I'm going to help him, I'm going to be with him over there for 12 years. But they were 12 years of prison for me. 
even though that I love him with all of my heart and I was with him like body and soul, but in prison. I was helping him in my own prison because for me, that Jewish ghetto, it, it, it's not who that I am because I'm a sparrow. It's true, I have a second name, Moshe, Dror Moshe. So I'm telling you all of that not because that I, I need you to know about me, just I want you to understand that the truth is being revealed to you corresponding to who that you really are. So you need to find yourself. And then you will find also so much truth that even you will be able to speak out Torah that will be perfect. Even if you are who that you are. Even if you feel that you are so far. Even if you came from, like me, I came from a secular family. We were not keeping Shabbat. We were not eating kosher. I was not fasting in Yom Kippur. Nothing like that. Nothing even close. I made tattoos when I was young, I was clubbing, I was making parties, I had a Jeep, I had a Kawasaki 500, I was having fun. I was very secular when I started my tshuva, and I was not seeking for Hashem. And that's the, that's the charm, that's the beauty of, of all of that process, because really, what that I was looking for was the truth, not Hashem. If you would offer me in the beginning of my tshuva to come to a synagogue to learn about the truth, to come to a Beit Midrash, I would reject you with two hands, not hugging. I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept your offering at all. I would just, no, I don't want it. I didn't want it. After I started finding, start finding the truth in many aspects, in many ways, so one of my friends in the army, he told me, you must meet a certain rabbit and She's amazing, she's fantastic, she's got divine spirit, you must meet her. I told him, okay, you know, let's go. But that was after a few months of, of finding many, many truths about myself. So I was ready for that meeting. Not so, like I'll tell you, but, but I went. And I went in, and we're sitting, uh, and she had a nice table, Shabbos table, like a, a, a religious house with a nice table, nice seats. And we're sitting, and she's tiny looking at me, and I was... When I stopped smoking, so I, I realized that the thing that was the hardest for me was not the, the active smoke, the smoke itself, just what to do with my hands. That was because, and then I realized that every time I felt a little bit embarrassed and not comfortable with myself, immediately I was, where's my cigarettes? I, I was looking for something to do with my hands. So that like, so when I was sitting in her house, so I felt very embarrassed from the situation, and I quit smoking already, so I didn't have anything to hold in my hands, and of course you're not going to smoke also over there. So I, I found a pack of, of business cards, and I was playing with the business cards in, in her house. I was just like playing with the business cards and busy. And then she's looking at me and she's saying, do you know that in one year and a half from now, you're going to be religious? <laughs> All of the pack, the, the cards, were on the floor. And I'm like collecting them one after the other. And I'm asking myself, should I stay here more? Maybe maybe I'll, I'll be able to, to hide or something. And, and I think, you don't mean religious, right? You, you mean with more faith. So she's saying, no, no, I mean white shirt. Black jacket, all of all of the all of the the, the costume, everything, all of the corset. <laughs> so I told her, no, I don't. So she said, don't worry, it's gonna be the best time of your life. You're gonna enjoy it. When I came back home from that experience, I started crying. Really, alone, twenty years old, in my own house, crying and crying and crying. And I said to Hashem because I had faith. I said to him. Why are you doing that to me? Stop it. I don't want it. Stop calling me. Stop come, Stop. Stop shining on I don't want to change my life. And the truth is that I wanted to change my life. This is why I started being in touch with him, finding him, looking for him. Because I felt bad with myself and I looked for my own truth. And then I realized that there is supervision in my life, that things are happening with a reason. So if there is supervision, it 
means that there is a supervisor, there is a creator. If it's a creation and not just chaos, so there is a creator. So I started being in touch with that one, even though that I wasn't sure how to call him and what's his name. And if he would tell me it's Hashem, Elokein, I, I wouldn't buy that necessarily. I, okay, maybe it's a name. It's one of the names. They call it Cosmos. They call it Infinity. They, whatever they call it, Jesus. I couldn't care less. I just, I was looking for myself. So I said to Hashem, why, why are you revealing yourself on me? I don't want it. And the truth is that I, I wanted it. I asked for it. But I didn't want it to become religious. I wanted to find the truth. And that is, I think, this is the voice of all of us. It's not that we want to be religious. We're looking for the truth. And when you find the truth, so you find about yourself, I'm Jewish. Okay, as a Jew, the Creator, once He revealed Himself on Mount Sinai and He commanded our nation to keep Shabbat, to keep Torah, to keep mitzvot forever. We are under that commandment. We cannot run away from that. That's part of our deal with Hashem. It's true. But the, the, that is not the purpose of our life, to keep Torah and mitzvot. There is a purpose for why to keep the Torah mitzvot, and that's the purpose of our life. Because everything in this world is a purpose, but it leads you to a higher level of purpose, from one purpose to the other. Okay, it's great to put filin, but that filin, when you put them, it's to remind you of something. Okay, about what? That Hashem told you to do that. Okay, great. Now that I know that Hashem told me to do that, there is a purpose for that, that I'm going to believe in Hashem, that I'm going to talk with Hashem, that I'm going to know Hashem. The Zohar Kodesh is saying that the purpose of all of the creation is begin the Ishtemo de Inle, that people are going to know Him, that everyone will know Him. That's the highest purpose of them all. Through Shabbat, you're going to know Him more. By eating kosher, you're going to know Him more. Wearing tzitzit, covering your body, covering your hair, all of the Torah mitzvot will bring you to know the Creator. So, me, myself, like I said before, I'm not so much of a person that can fit into Torah mitzvot because I really look for the higher purpose. But when I understand that God commanded me and I'm not supposed to argue with Him and to fight with Him, so I need to surrender. So, to surrender myself to Him is to keep Torah mitzvot. But only to be swallowed into it, to, 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 to run into it and to forget about the purpose means just to be Haredi, just to be religion, religious. For me, it's hell. For me, it's prison. It's not what that I'm asking for. That's not the purpose of my life, to be religious. That's not the purpose for me. It's prison for me. I'm ready to sit in prison if after those years in prison I'll find Hashem. I'm ready to surrender myself every day on a daily basis until I'm going to see Him finally. I'm ready to run all of my life with that purpose. That's me. And we think that all of us are like that. Because when Shabbat is the main thing in your life, it's kind of hard if you don't feel the taste of Shabbat. And if Kashrut is so important and you don't... We visit in a, in a, in a Jewish school during that too. And we asked the Jewish children, like, they were respecting us, you can speak to the kids and whatever. And we asked them, okay, so how is it and what's going on? And so the, the teachers were very proud that they're keeping the Judaism and like they're talking with the kids about being proud to be a Jew. And one of the kids, he was looking at us and he said, it's kind of hard to be Jewish. So we asked him why. So he said, because there is not a lot of kosher food in this area. And suddenly you see that this kid is suffering. He sees everyone are eating and drinking and being happy, just simple. Everyone around him are eating. And like we were, after Rosh Hashanah two years ago, we, we stopped in Amsterdam for, for a couple of days. And from there, we took another flight from, to another place. So we were walking in the streets of Amsterdam and we didn't have enough food with us at all. And it was, it was hard. 
the kids sees people eating French fries. I don't need to describe you those situations. They're more familiar to you than, than to me. French fries with, 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 with cheese and whatever. And everything is smells so good, so delicious. And in Disney, you can smell chocolate even from the plastic cupcakes <laughs> over there. So you lose your mind. You, you, you want to live. So people want to live. People want to feel alive. So the Torah and Mitzvot, suddenly you find it, that it's, 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 it's closing you. It's blocking you from simple life. But the truth is that it's not. Because that you forgot the purpose of your life and you're stuck in the middle of being religious, this is why you can't find happiness. And you're stuck in the Haredi world, in the Hasidi world, in the Baal Tshuva world, in the religious world, in the community world. You can be stuck even in your family if you forget the purpose. You can sit in the same place with the people that you love the most and you hate them all only because you forgot the purpose of why you got married, why you brought children to the world at all. What's the purpose of your life? What, when you don't have a purpose, when you don't have a meaning, this is why you're suffering from this world. But if you have a purpose, if you know what you're doing in this world, so then you don't suffer. You're ready to sacrifice yourself completely. And the hardest thing for you will be edible and will, you, you will be able to suffer it and to swallow it. Like the people that had a purpose, even during the Holocaust, in the camps, they survived. And the people that fell to despair, to sadness, they died. Many other people died as well. But when we're talking about the people that were working in the camps, they could survive if they had something that was holding them on. Like, I must find my family, or I have to tell what that happened to us. Some purpose they had, and with that purpose, they could live like that forever. They wouldn't die even after 60 years of suffering like that. Because everything is going after the will. And if your will is strong, that's it, you're going to win. Nothing will kill you when you want to live. But when you gave up, so you gave up, even if you will have so many wonderful things around you because you lost your desire for life. So, Torah mitzvot, it sounds amazing. Those concept, concepts, we idolized them almost. We made them sound so Torah, learning Torah, keeping Shabbat, eating kasher. It all sounds amazing. But the truth is that when we are finding ourselves in front of Shabbat, in front of eating kosher, it's not so shining to us. It's very hard. Shabbat can be like pretty gray in many, many ways. And to eating kosher, it's like, is there real use? Is there is a real reason? Okay, so maybe not to eat other animals or like seafood or what. Okay, but... Is it so important also if that, and like the gray area, the, the, the twilight zone is like many powers are playing in that battlefield of like, are you sure? Should we? Shouldn't we? My session, is it so important? The small things, Chalav Israel, but you said that also the you there is also fine. So all in, in all of the gray areas, it, it, so the, the Yetzirah is starting to play. But I'll tell you, it's not really the Yetzirah that is playing. It's the lack of purpose that is playing. It's the sadness. It's the lack of life that is playing in that place. Because if you would really want to find Hashem, you wouldn't care if you would drink that milk now or wouldn't drink that milk. You wouldn't feel that thirst to milk. You wouldn't feel that hunger for chocolate bars. You wouldn't care about all of those things. So they wouldn't be such strong, powerful enemies they wouldn't play in your table at all. You wouldn't care about those stuff at all. You would Anyway, you would just take a bite of a bread and take a zip of water and run to serve Hashem. You would put something in your mouth and run. If you have a purpose, you can live like that. So, life of Torah are not always answering to all of our expectations, and I'll explain to you why. Because we're trying to live life 
according to the explanations of other people that are trying to guide us how to live our lives. And we can't find our lives over there, under those explanations. The rabbi is coming and explaining you, you need to eat kosher. Okay, I hear you. You need to keep Shabbat. Okay, great, I hear you. And now then you find yourself in Shabbat and you can't find yourself over there in Shabbat. You find Shabbat, it's from 4 till 5 tomorrow. Great, but what am I supposed to do? How I'm going to enjoy the Shabbat? Okay, I need to eat kosher. Okay, I have a list of kosher food. I know exactly what I should, but I like different flavors. I don't know how to find, you can't find yourself inside of Torah Mitzvot. That's the reason why Torah Mitzvot become to be hard on you. Because it's hard for you to find yourself inside of Torah Mitzvot. So the real purpose is, before of running to keep Torah Mitzvot, is to try to bring yourself up to the surface, to find who you are. Now people that will come to you and will tell you, hey, crazy rabbi, relax, you're about tshuva, you don't know what we're going through, I'll tell you. The reason that people are forcing their students, their public, to keep the wrong mitzvot and to become Haredim, it's only because that those people themselves are afraid to lose their religion. They themselves are Haredim. They themselves are afraid. They are afraid. They're like Holocaust survivors that no matter what, they're terrified. They're always protective. They're always watching that no one will talk to their children, that nothing going to happen in their camp, that no one going to break the fence, that no foreign wisdom going to penetrate to their home yard, to their school, to their systems. The truth is that they themselves just don't count on themselves. They themselves don't have the desire that we were talking about before. They themselves don't have that purpose of finding Hashem in Barach with all of their hearts. So they're afraid that attemptions will attempt them. The desires will arouse them, will, will, will take them out. But when you want Hashem in Barach, so nothing can attempt you. If you really love your wife, the most beautiful woman in the world will not gonna attempt you because you don't want it, because you love your wife. If you don't love your wife, if you're questioning or why you got married, so then every option will attempt you. But it's only because of your lack of love. Not because that woman is more beautiful than your wife. You couldn't care less about beauty when you love the soul of your wife. You don't look at your wife, she's amazing, because you look at her and you see the one that you love. And then there are no desires for you anymore. There is only pure love that is guiding you from, 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 from one minute to the other. So those tests are tests of truth that the Creator is putting us to deal with. And the Creator, he doesn't want liars. He doesn't want no phony people. No people that are pretending. He wants the truth. Don't say it's hard to learn Torah. Say, I don't desire it yet. Maybe I'll go and check with myself why I don't want to learn Torah. Don't say it's hard. Don't blame it like me. I was blaming it on time. Say, I'm not perfect. Don't blame it on time. Moshe Rabbeinu, in one minute, he can say Torah that it will be perfect forever. If you cannot do it in one hour and a half, something is wrong with you. You're not in the level of Moshe. Don't blame it on time. No, if you give me another hour to plaster you, I promise to you that you... No, that's not the right way. If it would be the truth, it would be a truth. When Hashem won and even the donkey was speaking with Bil'am, verses that been written in the Torah, a donkey can say verses if Hashem wants. You don't need to be an angel that the Torah will be heard from your mouth. You just need to say the truth. And then those are verses. This is the real Torah. You can say Torah like Rabbi Nachman of Islam if you know how to find yourself to Hashem. If you really connected yourself to Hashem. And it all depends on the will. Moshe Rabbeinu and Yosef HaTzadik and David HaMelech, all three of those righteous people and many others passed away in Shabbat Mincha, in time that caused Ravad Ravin. Will of all will. Their 
finest, highest level of achievement, what they achieved in the end of their life was that they wanted Hashem Itbarach with all of their heart. That was the success of their life, that they wanted Hashem. The numeral value of the name Moshe is 345. The numeral value, one above it, 346, is Ratzon, will. When Moshe is climbing above his level to the higher level, it's the will. He wants. He wants Hashem. That's perfect. If you want now your kid to learn, so what? You want him to know that thing? You want him to want to learn. Even if you're going to teach him today exactly from A to Z how to be a doctor, you know, as a doctor, you know that it's not enough. Because also as a doctor, you always need to keep on learning and learning and learning. Even as a the Talmid Chacham, a genius. Today, you're a genius. Rabbi Vadya Yosef, when he was 60, he was already a genius. When he was 40, he was already a genius. He already knew all of the Torah by heart. But was it enough? No. Also on his deathbed, he was keep on learning and growing and developing. Why? Because the Torah is wider than the sea. So the only way really to buy the Torah and to buy development and to grow is always to grow, always to continue. So for that, you need only one thing, will. This is why it's not important which level you have, which level you're holding. Because let's say that you're holding in the lowest level of them all. Okay, you're with me in the same place. Great. So what now? If you will just want to climb up from that filth, you will do it. Because it depends on your will. And even if it's going to take you a hundred years of labor, of hard work, in the end, you're going to make it. If someone will offer me right now that in the end of my days, in after 120 years of life, I'm, I'm putting in it uh, that someone will put it in the contract that I'll have 120. If someone will let me sign on a document, on a paper, that I will complete my tikkun, that I will fix myself completely, only in the last day of my life, and not one hour earlier, I'll sign that. Now I'm signing on it. I'm happy to. Why not? I would love to. But people have that urge, that craziness. No, I must complete it today. I must learn more Zohar. I must learn more Midrashim. I have to do more than one hour in Bodhidut. I have to go more times to... Relax. The ones that are asking to be purified, the Gemara is saying that the Beidin are telling them, Hamten, you should wait. If you came to purify, they tell you to wait. That waiting, that expectation of yours that you sit and you wait and you yearn and you want, this is the cleansing process. This is the, the process of your purification that you want. That's how you're being purified. By wanting, by hoping, by yearning, by praying, by accepting the insultings and the shame of being so low that needs to wait and wait and wait. It humbles you. It humiliates you and cleans you and prepares you to that day that you will be a worthy vessel to contain the light of Hashem. But until then, at least you know, I was doing the right thing. I did it my way. Yes, at least you can be honest and feel good with yourself. To feel like I did the best I could person is blaming himself, I'm not, I'm not learning enough Torah, eight, day, eight hours every day, eight days a week, I'm, I'm working, I can't complete my, 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 my sederly mood, I'm not learning enough, I'm not modest enough, I'm not kosher, whatever. Why are you working? Why are you going every day eight hours away from your family, away from Beit Midrash, to the, that office, and you work? To that gardens that you're gardening, why are you doing it? Because you don't have money, right? So there is a purpose for why you're doing it. Okay, you want to say, I don't have enough faith. This is why I'm counting on myself working. Okay, so work on your faith and don't slaughter yourself alive on the fence that you're working because really you have an answer also in Judgment Day. You will say to Hashem, I'm sorry. 
Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> no, it's not. You can say, I'm sorry, Hashem. I had to work. You remember, you were not supplying those diamonds. You know, to, you, you were not supp supplying the, that gold. You, you remember, yes, I was saying Birkat Amazon, but treasures I couldn't find. You Hi. <laughs> we were there together, Hashem. What are you talking about? Was I wrong? Was I so wrong? So why you feel so wrong? Because you let other people opinions to affect on you and to make you yourself question yourself. Maybe I'm wrong, but you're not because you're thinking because you decided to take that job because you had to pay those bills and you know that you were standing in front of those bills and someone had to pay them or that they're going to cut off your electricity. What do you want? You don't have enough faith to count on the shame and that money will... Now you want to blame yourself on that? Faith is not something that you should ask for, Hashem. Okay, so go and ask. So go and say to Hashem, you know, Hashem, I'm finding myself that I'm lack of faith, that I'm probably lack of confidence, because the verse is saying that the one that trusts Hashem, kindness is going to surround him. And I don't feel like kindness surrounding me. I have some judgments in my life. I have some constrictions, difficulties in my life. So it's not all kindness, Hashem. It's kind of hard even sometimes. So maybe I'm not counting on you enough, probably. So, okay, Hashem, can you help me and guide me? How in the world I can count on you more? Because you know, Hashem, I remember that once I tried to count on you and I, I didn't felt that you were with me over there, so it kind of shaked my confidence in you, Hashem. Now when we're talking about it, so it's, it's waking up on me that I, sometimes I'm also disappointed from you, Hashem. So you do have all of those opinions inside of you. You have all of those thoughts inside of you. Instead of defining them as foreign thoughts, Maybe try to walk with them all the way and to present them to Hashem. Maybe go and talk about what you're going through in life with Hashem. If you really believe that God is a loving Father, so why won't you go and talk to Him like an honorable child? Say to Him exactly what you're going through. Father, I want to appreciate you. I love you very much. I care about you. But it's very, very hard for me to serve you. Can you please help me? When you say those words, those words are coming from an honest place. Those prayers are prayers of truth. Those prayers will be accepted. Like the verse is saying that Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. So if you will pray prayers of truth, even revealing your low level of truth, your lusts, your desires, your confusions, your lack of faith, lack of confidence. But you will be honest about it. So by doing that, you open yourself to be saved, to be redeemed. Because as long as you're denying your situation and you're just blaming it on the time, you will never gonna understand that it's not depends on time. You're blaming it on Hashem. No, it's so hard to catch a minion here. No, it's so hard to find Chalav Israel here. No, it's so hard to wake up so early and I need to say I don't want and be honest and ask for Hashem to help you to find more will. Because if you would have a meeting of a million dollars at 3 a.m., you wouldn't go to sleep and you know it. It wouldn't be hard for you to wake up. You would sleep on, on broken glass to wake up at 3 a.m. for a million dollars. You, you know it. So we must admit that Shachrit in a minyan is not such a big deal for us like a million dollars. And it's not a lie. And it's not disgracing Shachrit. It's just the truth. This is the level that we're holding. So let's just be honest with the word that we're holding. And if you want to fix it, so go to Hashem and fix it with Him. You want to wake up earlier? You're not able. Who is opening your eyes in the morning? Hashem, right? He is Pokeach Ivrim. He's opening the eyes of the dead, of the blind. So, can you wake up yourself? Go to sleep now and wake up yourself in 43 minutes from now. Are you able to do that? You know you can't do that. So, how do you think that you can wake up yourself at 5 a.m. or at 7 a.m.? You cannot. Only when Hashem is going to wake you up, 
suddenly open your eyes. Hashem woke you up. If you really believe in Hashem, it will So you need to believe and understand that you are not waking yourself up in the morning. So if you're not waking yourself up in the morning, you cannot not blaming yourself on being wake up enough early, early enough. You cannot blame yourself on what that is not in your powers to do. If you're not waking yourself up, oh, you can say now, but I went to sleep late. Are you sure that you went to sleep late? You sure that you can blame yourself? Maybe your wife was talking to you late. Maybe there were dishes in the kitchen that you had to wash. Maybe you had horrible thoughts that you were very afraid to deal with and you chose to turn on the TV and to distract your thoughts from your sadness, from your stress, from your sorrow. So maybe this is why you were staying so late. So now, are you so guilty that you're so afraid? And this is why you open the TV? Let's talk about it. That will be an investigation for the truth. That's going to be the search for the real truth. If you're going to do that with Hashem, you will solve all of your fears. In the end, you're going to find the roots of why am I so scared. Because if now I'm going to tell you, why are you so scared to receive all of those bills in the mail? Why are you so terrified to open the envelopes when it's written from the government, when it's written from the, uh, from the city hall? Why are you afraid to open those ones? It's, you know, it's police. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid to open? You're going to tell me, I'm afraid that the, the power company is going to turn off my electricity. So I'm going to ask you, are you afraid of darkness? That's the reason. Are you afraid that the dairy products that you have in your refrigerator will be spoiled, will be ruined? That's the reason? You're afraid of living life with no electricity? Say, it's, no, it's a piece of cake. Okay, so why are you afraid? It's not the darkness, okay? We took that out from the equation. Okay, so why are you afraid? You know, my wife, she's screaming at me. If we don't pay the bills on time, she's screaming. Okay, great. One step in her. Great, so you're not afraid of the power off, you're afraid of your wife. Wonderful, you're afraid of your wife and she's screaming, right? I'll ask you, so why yesterday when she was screaming your head off, you couldn't care less? She could scream and scream and scream and scream and scream and she could eat ice cream to chill herself because you couldn't care less about her screaming when you have something else in mind. So you're not really afraid of your wife screaming. So why you use your wife as an example? Why you chose to say my wife? Because your wife really, I think, I suggest an, a solution. Maybe your wife is reminding you that you not so sure that you're able to supply the money. Maybe she is helping you to see that your lack of confidence, lack of faith. Maybe she is helping you to see that you are not sure that Hashem he loves you. Maybe she helps you to see your weaknesses that you're so afraid to deal with. And this is why you rather to shush her and to pay all the bills right in the fall of time that you won't have to deal with your lack of confidence, with your lack of faith, with your lack of self-esteem. So you're going to take the best job in the world and you're going to work extra hours and even in Shabbat and you're going to do whatever it takes not to deal with your fears. And that's the way never to solve your problems. But if you're going to confront your fears and you're going to walk into the roots, to the, to, the, to the depths of your soul, of your fears, and you're going to confront them once, you're going to solve them once and for all. If you're not going to solve them, you're going to reject them from one relationship to the other from one person to the next, from one job to the other, nothing going to heal you. Because Hashem, He loves you enough to keep on rebuking you and aiming you to the purpose of your life to solve all of your problems, to achieve your real individual redemption, to set you free. And there is no place to hide from Hashem. We cannot hide from Hashem. Because you try to avoid Hashem in work, you're going to find it in the house. You're going to find, try to, 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 to ignore your wife, you're going to find it in your health. 
You're going to find, find it under your clothes. You're going to find You're going to try to dress. You're going to find the same. Like, something will happen. Something will pop up. Something will... Hashem will rebuke you. And not because He hates you. God rebukes the ones He loves. Because He wants to bring you to life with meaning, with purpose. That you will have love. That you will find happiness. And first of all, you cannot love when you're still afraid. You cannot be happy when you're still angry and upset. The reason that a person is falling to sadness and to depression is only because that he is not dealing with his problems. And he's avoiding the truth. Like we said before, if you have a purpose in life, and your purpose doesn't need to be divine. It can be to solve my issues. It can be to be happy. To get rid of my fears. It's good enough. Not to be upset. Not to be angry all of the time. Not to be sad and depressed. If you will have that purpose, you will find that source of energy from inside. The heart is the only pump in the world that works with no energy source, with no, with no battery. It works by itself. It's the only thing in the world that works like that. And you have it inside of you. And it means to serve Hashem from your heart. With all of your heart, with all of the powers of your spirit, with every tool you have in life, show love to Hashem. Show love to yourself, to the creation of Hashem. You want to love your friends, you need to love yourself first. That's the beginning of your process of coming closer to Hashem, is to feel comfortable. Hey, to feel proud. Hey, to feel good. To feel I'm doing the best that I can. To feel complete. And then you can stand in judgment day. And you're not afraid of no judgments. And you're not afraid to die. And you're not afraid of anything. Because you know who you are. And you feel good with yourself. Even to go. Even to die. A person can be crazy. Losing his mind. No, I'm afraid to go out. To breathe air outside. Because of all traffic. Smoke. No, he's afraid. Germs. People are coughing. No, he, no I cannot be in a closed room. Losing his mind. If he, that person will see his, run, his kid running to the highway, what he will do? He will not going to think about death anymore. He will risk his life because now he's got a purpose. Traffic. Noontime. So much smoke. Trucks are driving. Semi-trailers are driving. You couldn't care less. Why? My kid's life in risk. Okay, I'm going. Why? Because there is a higher purpose. So when you have a higher purpose, all of your fears, all of your stress is just melting. It's, it, it expires. It just it disappears. It doesn't have no value anymore. When you have a purpose, your purpose will never going to be my purpose. Your purpose will never be defined as keeping to our mitzvot. No. Only you can find your own purpose. Purpose because God made you different and unique. So you have a different purpose. Even if we can cooperate in a certain way, maybe if we find many, many things that are similar between us, it's still different. We're all flowers in a very colorful front lawn. Very, very different one from each other. Even from the same species, they're not the same. They're different. You're different. So you have a different purpose. So you need to find your own purpose. You need to find yourself. The way to do that is only through having an honest conversations with yourself. Talk to yourself. Write to yourself. Talk to Hashem. Write to Hashem. Prayer. Praise. Praise. Thank. Do tshuva. Confession. Confessions. Whatever it takes. You must speak. Talk to your friends, talk to your lawyer, talk to your doctor, talk to whoever you can. Talk to yourself until you find the truth. But be honest, because only honesty will reveal the truth. Only that, that's the only tool, the only vessel, the only tool, the only weapon that we got is the truth that we have, means our honesty. To be honest with who that we are. And then you found the problem. Pray. 
You're a believer, you have faith, pray. Hashem, I need chizuk, I need power. Hashem, I need more energy. Hashem, I need more happiness. I found out that I'm sad. I found out that I'm afraid. Great, Hashem, give me courage. Hashem, give me power. Give me strength. Give me money. Give me cash, not checks for three months from now, Hashem. I need cash for today. Be honest. And then your prayers will be accepted. All of your prayers will be accepted. Lies, prayers of lies. Hashem, I want to be holy. Hashem, I want to be righteous. Hashem, I want to make aliyah. They won't be accepted because you're not saying them from the heart, really. Do you know what it means to do aliyah, to make aliyah? You know what you're talking about? You can't find no parking space in Jerusalem. <laughs> oh. Try to, uh, to register yourself in the city hall in Jerusalem. Ah, I don't speak English. Ah, what? Nothing. Can't talk, nothing. Like, it, it's not smooth. I will testify on that. It's not easy. So, I want to make Aliyah, I want to make Aliyah. Wait, relax. Think about it. I'm not saying no. But be honest with yourself. Are you trying to run away from the U.S., from your troubles, from your problems? You think, what is waiting for you over there? I'm asking. I'm not saying no. Maybe it's your redemption. Maybe you'll find true happiness over there. But say the truth. Check it. At least check it. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just saying be honest. Check yourself. Don't live life of fake, life of dream. No, when we'll make aliyah, when I'm going to get married, when we'll have children. I saw married people with children that lives in Jerusalem in their own houses that they live in a in, in nightmare, like always they're suffering. In their own house, with money, with the wife, she's beautiful, they're rich, two cars, children, private school, whatever you want. Suffering, hate themselves, hate to look at the mirror. Why? Because they haven't solved their own issues, individual emotional problems. Honesty is the key. Not the redemption, not Mashiach, not Israel, not Jerusalem, not money, not Shiduchim, not the houses, nothing. That's not the key. You need the key to your heart. That's honesty. Honesty is the key to your heart. And then when you have honesty, you won't care anymore where you live, what you do. And you will find desire to do good. And then you will improve. And you will grow. And you will make Aliyah and you're going to get married and you'll buy that house. Whatever you will want, you will achieve. But at least you will achieve what that you really want with your heart. And not what the people told you that you must achieve. No more plastering, no more lies. No more living in life in, in, in fake, in false. Seek for the truth. Even to die for the truth. It's much better than to live a whole long life of, of shame, hiding, being afraid of ourselves. Afraid of the Creator, it's the craziest sickness of them all. To be afraid of Hashem, that's stupid. That's stupid. That's how we've been taught. I sat for lunch in one of the Shabbatot here, and there was a woman that was all of the time saying, no, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to go back to hell. I'm going to go straight to hell. And Every third sentence, she, uh, no, no, back to hell, straight to hell, straight to hell. <laughs> I don't know. I thought she was from hell A. I I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know. I think that hell is in this world. I think this is hell. In the world to come, we believe that there is. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that thing that I'm saying to you now. The world to come, we believe it exists. This world... We, I couldn't find it, Rabbi Nachman of Bratzev said. Nothing here is really pleasuring. No, there is no real this world. Oh, no. Nothing is satisfying. And we're suffering here, so it's probably hell. This is what Rabbi Nachman of Bratzev said. And we're suffering here, so it's probably hell. So this is hell. So now you need to be afraid to be punished. Anywhere on your way to heaven, you're going to meet Hashem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We gave you those envelopes. We gave you empty envelopes. Please try to help us and fill them. And fill them with your details and with a donation to help us to keep on <laughs> expanding our activities. We're making wonders in the world. I'm telling you, I can see that 
and and I'm being honest with you. Receiving emails day and night, all of the time. People waking up, people life being saved by those classes, inspiring classes. And thank God that Hashem is using me for that. Um, amazing goal. That's my holy desire to continue to do that until last day of my life here on earth. And I'm blessing you to be partners with me and to help us to save as many souls as we can. We're reaching out to more than 50,000 people today. And it's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. On a monthly basis. Every month we have, and it's growing, more than 50,000 people watching. We have millions of hours of, of faith and Torah teaching online that have been watched already. So be, be, be friendly with us and help us, be partners with us. And that's going to be charity that will stand for you forever. Amen. Can you hear what's on? May Hashem, by the merit of your goodwill, holy intentions, and generosity of your heart, bless you that you will find inner happiness, joy, and satisfaction from being who that you are. Believe in yourself. Find the beauty that God planted inside of you. Believe in yourself that you're important and great in the eyes of Hashem because He made you to be exactly who that you are. He illustrated you. He created you. He built you. He designed you to be exactly who that you are. That's His wisdom. That's His will. So find His wisdom inside of yourself and just uncover the light of Hashem that is hidden and treasured inside of you. And Hashem will make all of your prayers answered. Amen. Can you hear that song? In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator. To remember that it's all Him. Never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.